Friends and lovers, welcome to the Gympressions for Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition on the Switch. I have played this game three times now, because it's been released three times, to my knowledge. Uh, bought the treasure, uh, treasure box, I should say, uh, for the Wii U version not too long ago as well, actually, because I really do. If you haven't been able to tell from the other times I've talked about Hyrule Warriors, I really, really like Hyrule Warriors. Uh, especially in a post-Dynasty Warriors 9 world, this is just better. It's the last truly great Warriors title as far as I'm concerned, uh, but then again, some of the ones that have been based on other IP that I'm not familiar with, I've not tried out too much. But it's hard to argue in a game with a playable Zant who plays fantastically, I might add. It's hard to argue that's not the best Warriors game ever made. Uh, the Zant, of course, being one of my favorite uh, Zelda characters throughout the series. Uh, I always liked how he had that cool, collected demeanor up until things went wrong for him and we found out he was this tantrum-throwing uh, man-child, essentially. And I just found it a very interesting twist on the character uh, and really, really fun, memorable boss fight. Uh, but anyway, you can switch between characters, so I've got Zant teaming up with Tingle. Obviously, I'd be playing as Tingle, take any excuse. And he's great. Uh, and a post-launch edition um, from the Wii U version, he didn't come with the game at launch, but uh, you know, subsequent versions have him in it as standard. And it's a good, good port, good re-release of the game. Uh, you've got a ton of content in there by now. Um, when the game launched, it had a substantial amount of stuff. Lots of characters, lots of levels, the adventure modes, which lasted a long, long time. Um, one of the few games with a season pass that I actually could recommend to people, and I never recommend season passes. The, to date, this is the only game in which I've looked at a season pass and thought, you know what, that's actually a decent deal, because the game itself is as complete as you could expect. I mean, compared to something like Star Wars Battlefront, uh, the original, not the original original, the later original, I guess would be a better, 2015 Battlefront, should have just led with that, um, where it clearly was an unfinished game that they expected you to pay another 50 bucks to finish off yourself. Uh, this was already co feature complete, and by the time the Season Pass content came out, it was just more of a good thing. Uh, and then now you buy this version, the de definitive edition, they say, so if they start putting more in it, that's a lie. I hate that when they do ultimate or definitive editions of games, they just throw shit in. Uh, as like pre-order bonuses and season passes still, and it's not very ultimate, is it? Not very definitive. Um, but that's besides the point. Back to how this bad boy runs. It runs very well on the Switch. It's, uh, like I said, very good port job. The frame rate is good and consistent. It looks gorgeous on the little screen. If you play it in handheld mode, and that's how predominantly I use the Switch. Generally nowadays, unless I'm recording footage like I did here, I will not play it on the TV. I just absolutely prefer it as a handheld system. And it's added to the, the resale value of some of the ports that have come over. You know, I, I repurchased Doom uh, simply because I liked the idea of playing it on the little screen, taking it wherever I want to go. And I, I've spoken at length before about how much I love portable gaming. Um, I think I even mentioned it on the Fortnite Impressions, the video before this one, and it holds true here. I loved playing this on the 3DS and being able to play it now in all its glory, not a compromised 3DS version, but all its glory, is highly enjoyable. And just the sheer amount of shit to do now, by, by the time all the content's been added to over the releases and the DLCs, this package is Really what people think of when they say an embarrassment of riches. This is utterly drenched in things to do. So very much worth picking up, especially if you didn't own it before. But I think if you did own any of the other versions, just being able to play it on the Switch is, at least for me, as someone who has bought it, you know, put his own money where his mouth is, I don't regret plonking down cash for it again. Plus the original roster of characters from the base game are now unlocked as standard, so you don't have to run through hoops to unlock characters like the aforementioned Zant. Uh, some of the characters you still do have to unlock, the ones that were introduced later, like Tingle, requires you to play through some adventure mode to get to him. And while that is a bonus, the one catch is that with so many characters now unlocked to begin with, the weapons you acquire as you play through levels, is well, they're distributed across a larger pool of characters so if you want a particular character's weapon it might it'll take you longer than it used to uh, because so many more characters are unlocked to begin with so the stuff you get 
you know, you don't just get the weapon based on the character you're playing. Like, you could be playing as Impa, and you could unlock a weapon for Sheik. So, of course, the more characters are unlocked, the more weapons are available, so it just takes longer to get stuff. Still, when you've got so many characters, and so many of the characters play so differently, uh, there really isn't cloning going on here. Characters have not just different moves, but different styles of play, like Zant, his charge attacks can be leveled at enemies multiple times. So, you know, you can make him grow and stamp his foot, but if you keep hammering the button, he'll keep stamping his foot, and it'll build up a meter. And if you build up the meter too much, if you overcharge it, then the attack will fuck up. And, you know, Zant will stub his toe or fall over dizzy, and that'll make him vulnerable to attack. You know, you won't be able to do anything for a, a few precious moments. But if you manage to do it just right and you fill the meter up without going over the top, you press uh, your simple one charge attack, you just press a button, and Zant's helmet comes off, and you can either have him slice around in a whirlwind, uh, basically wherever you want to go, or he can stand in the spot and attack with energy balls just over and over and over again as a rapid attack. Some characters have meters that can build and be used in different ways, some don't, but every single character has something very, very different going on. You compare this to Dynasty Warriors 9 with so many characters sharing the same bloody weapons and doing the same bloody things, and you can really see the difference between an Omega Force that's got money and motivation and an Omega Force that clearly doesn't, because some of the uh, like the uh, original IP, the stuff that Tecmo Koei owns and runs, they just don't seem to have any passion for it whatsoever. I defy anyone to look at Dynasty Warriors 9 and think, yeah, that's a passion project right there. But then you compare it to this, and you can clearly see the love and the energy and the money and ev just the effort the effort that's been expended to make this a good game. And I don't know if they were just doing it because they got to impress Nintendo, or if they just had a lot more of a fire lit under them when they made this, but the difference between the projects is a fucking gulf. It's definitely something I'd like to see a sequel to. I mean, we've now had this game three times, so it would be nice to see a, a fresh from the ground up take on it. But uh, I mean, really, this game was so close to a perfect Warriors game. The closest, again, that I may have ever seen. Uh, Dynasty Warriors 8, Extreme Legends, something else. The PS4 version of it that had all of the content. Now, as far as Dynasty Warriors games go, that was still the greatest one, in my opinion. And the last truly good Dynasty Warriors game. But either way, the Switch has made a killing re-releasing games, or at least playing host to re-released games. And some people have criticised that, some people have dismissed the Switch as a port machine, but A, they're backing it up with a lot of brand new games as well, uh, B, Super Mario Odyssey, I know that's more or less point A, but it's such a good game, it deserves its own fucking point, and point C, they're really good fucking ports. And to me at least, it's remarkable how a handheld version of a game can bring it new life. Uh, I wasn't the only one, when I did my Fortnite impressions, I wasn't the only one, it turns out, to have found that the game was just a lot more enjoyable in a handheld format. Uh, something about just a change in format can dramatically change a game experience. It's why when the PS Vita was a thing, I used to say of several good looking games, I'd really like to play it on the PS Vita, because there are certain experiences I know I'm just going to enjoy a lot more if I'm playing it in my, my little piggy hands. So that's what I think of Hyrule Warriors. I do, well, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, we should say, definitively. I don't know if this video will even be seen by you. We'll have to see if Nintendo lets it stay up. Uh, they generally are okay with the third-party games that use their IP, uh, but again, we will see. Uh, right now, a Jimquisition of mine is um, flagged for complete deletion for having a few seconds of a Pokemon trailer in it. It's always the Pokemon stuff. Don't fuck with Pokemon on YouTube. Um, or generally just don't cover Nintendo stuff if you want your stuff to stay around. But yeah, that's a new thing that's going on. And so far I've not found the, uh, the, uh, the copyright deadlock is all that effective at it because it didn't work for WWE when they did it as well. So we might be at an actual point now where covering Nintendo games isn't just something you do to, you know, have a boycott or whatever for the way they treat this whole fair use and, and YouTube situation, but it might just be impossible to cover it at all. Unless, of course, you're in that skeevy Nintendo Creators program where you're essentially, you know, publisher-run media. But that's another story for another time. Right now, I'll just say that Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition is 
bloody good, ruddy bloody good. And if you haven't played it before and you like the hack and slash, the Warriors games, I would highly recommend it. It's not just a really good... In fact, I would say it's probably the best Zelda game on the Switch.